Hey, everybody. Welcome back to 19 Cats and Counting. I am your co-host, Linda Hall, and we are so excited today. We have the Hannah Shaw, kitten lady. Never seen anybody. Well, I don't know. She's maybe close with Rita. A love for cats, and she focuses on those poor babies that need all that attention and just can't be in the shelters right now. So we are very excited to talk to her about kittens and fostering, which we all need, and we will get to that as soon as we come back from this break. Hey everybody, welcome back to 19 Cats and Counting. You are here with your co-host Linda Hall and Rita Reimers. Are you there, babe? I'm here and I wish I'd thought to wear my kitten ears like you. Yes, they Mine are, are so down much chair. fun. They actually <laughs> light up too. They are just the funnest thing in the whole world. Oh, I wow. had to have them Look when I saw that. them. I had to have them. <laughs> yeah, we were in five below and we were going crazy because it was all these different uh, yeah, headphones with kitten ears. How could I leave that five bucks? Come on now. No, I know, right? So you got to interview Hannah before. I didn't yeah. get to. It was during that time when we were out with the COVID and I, I missed know. out on her. So I'm really excited that I get to talk to her. Well, I will let you take the lead. Why don't you go ahead and introduce her? All uh, right. Hannah Shaw, how are you? Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, we're so excited. So I was really back. bummed that I missed you. So well, I'm we, here now. We good. can all out together. <laughs> we get to make up for it. So your heart really lies with those tiny little sweet babies. And I I have never taken that on because it just, well, I've had human children and I know how they kept me up feeding them. So I'm just not <laughs> sure I'm up for that again. You you're a busy lady. Tell us what what drew you to the to the babies? What is what, what sent your heart to that specific group? You know, I think it's just that that was the population I stumbled upon so many years ago and like realized that that is a population that doesn't have enough support. Um, it's a really interesting population to me because, you know, you get to go on this journey with them, but it has like a defined like beginning, middle and end. Um, and then you get to do it again and you get to kind of experience this entire uh, transformation with them from being like this little seedling to being like a, you know, growing cat. Yes. Uh, and I so, love your posts. I love your posts where you show though, you show how helpless and fragile they were. And then, you know, a few weeks later, they're just thriving in your care. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's so much fun for me and, uh, is my greatest passion in the world working with that population. I know that it is really intimidating to people. And yeah. I think that's like a, a very natural and probably a correct response. You know, anybody who's going into that with too much confidence the first time probably uh, could use a reality check. But like, sure. It yes. definitely is. It definitely is. Um, a precarious situation when you take on a, a tiny, especially a newborn neonatal kitten. Um, but it, that doesn't mean it's not something that you can do. I mean, anybody can learn how to do it and you learn through experience and hopefully some guidance. Yes. Um, so it's, it's definitely an attainable thing for people who are interested in that. But uh, yeah, I mean, when, when it's your first time doing it, I'm sure it's like first time having a child or something where you're like, Oh my gosh, oh, I, I really need guidance and I'm yes. tired and there's got to be a better way of doing this thing that I'm doing. You know, at this point, I've been doing this for so long that I have it down to a real science so I can help people figure out like the, the best way to do things, including like, how do you not be sleep deprived, you know? Well, yes, what? that's every mother of an infant is like, I haven't slept in eight years, you know? So yeah, this is this is taking on the same thing, but with fostering, yes, there's an end day and kittens take less time to get <laughs> more self-sufficient. I know. Well, when humans people are like, do. oh my gosh, that's a big commitment. I'm like, it's eight weeks. Like a child is 18 plus years. Right. So, exactly. Uh, you know, I get to, the, the good thing about fostering kittens is you get to decide when you take a little break or like right now I have, um, I have a couple kittens who are like just at that weaning age and I am just almost to the point where I'm not going to have to wake up in the middle of the night. Nice. And so for me, 
Like I'm going to give myself a couple days of that before I take on more neonates because Great. I've earned it. I've been bottle feeding these babies Four. for like weeks. So yes. I'm like, as soon as I get that like eight hour night, I'm going to be so refreshed. I just want like a couple of those and then I'll tell the shelter, all right, I can take on more neonates. But I think that that's, that's something that a lot of people don't realize is like when you're fostering, like you decide what you get to do. The shelter doesn't tell you, you're going to do this. You tell the shelter, here's what I have the availability to do. And, and that's, that's like a real gift to yourself to be able to do it sustainably. You can decide, you know, here's what I have the time to commit to, you know, maybe I want a couple nights of sleep and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with saying like, I'm actually not going to take on any kittens until next Friday or whatever. And then, you know, do, well, there's do always going to be kittens that need it. That's the thing. There really are. There will always, and, and that's sad, you know, that, that like on any given day, if I call the shelter and say, I'm open to taking kittens today, they will have kittens for me. Um, so it's, it's sad to know that, you know, there's so many could yes. every single day be getting more kittens, but it's empowering to know that, you know, you get to set the pace at which you do this. And hopefully if you can inspire other people in your life to get involved, you know, uh, with many people doing it, there's, you don't have to feel like yes. you have to do it all, you know, yes. that's for me been a really important thing. Cause you know, 12 years ago, I didn't know anybody who was doing this. And I really did feel like anybody that I left behind at the shelter, I was like leaving behind. And now when I say no, I'm like, I know that somebody else is going to, someone else is going to pick up, you know, yeah. where I'm leaving off. And that's because a lot more people are involved in fostering now and it's getting better all the time, but you're right. There's still not enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of my local rescue friends, uh, I think, you know, her too, Susan Cooksey Spalding. She's always taking in kittens that need, you know, special handling, not just the young ones. And I'm, I know you do as well. There's, there's some that have, uh, medical issues that need extra special care. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, that's true. Right now I have um, a couple of those. Right now I have a kitten named Kale who is recovering from chest surgery. She has um, pectus excavatum, which is also called funnel chest. So um, with kittens, what's really, I think really kind of fun, maybe I have a weird definition of fun, <laughs> um, but one thing that I really enjoy about working with neonatal kittens is you get to see a lot of things that people don't even realize are very common because a lot of the times these kittens would pass away or be euthanized without care. Um, but when you're open to taking on more challenging cases, you get to really try to see like, like test the limits of what is possible. You know, my first pectus excavatum kitten was only a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did this chest surgery to see if it would work for her and it did. And so now I have another one and we saw her in the shelter and I was like, we can help that one. Like we know how to help that one. And she got the chest surgery. She's recovering great. And like, that is, that for me is like such a passion to be able to kind of, uh, I don't know, be a little bit pioneering in this sure. and, and just know that like, a lot of a lot of the things that kittens need done have not been done before so we just have to move forward and hope and and see what's possible and when we find out what's possible we can help so many more sure. animals with the and knowledge we grow in our medical knowledge i i had a cat many many years ago about 30 years ago now that i think about it that was fiv positive and the vet was like and i didn't know anything about fiv at the time and and he was like it's a death sentence and he put boo boo down then i was uh rita found a cat in the carolinas that was fiv that nobody would could would adopt because he was fiv and so she talked me into taking him and uh i've had him for probably four years now and he's great he's 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 just one of my soul kitties. He's just in my heart. And uh, so, you know, there's so much that we learn by giving them a shot and not just automatically writing them off. And, yeah. and you've partnered with Royal Canaan to get the word out about fostering, which is amazing that, the, that this cat company, cat centric company has come out and, and worked to give us ideas about that. Rita and I, but well, Rita's a foster failure. How many cats have you got now in your home right now that were supposed what? to be fosters? Oh, that were supposed to be fosters? Probably half of them. I'd say <laughs> eight or nine. Um, but I had a special needs kitten 
early on, you know, my Sadie, I didn't know she was going to be special needs, but she was diagnosed with a severe uh, hole in her heart, ventral septal defect. Um, of course, I learned how to take care of her. But this was back when, as you say, people were just euthanizing those type of kittens and I wouldn't let them do it. But she lived to be almost seven years old. They gave her a life expectancy of six months. So um, I gave her a really good life. And then I mourned really hard for her, wrote my book, Sadie's Heart. Um, I, just, I think it takes a special person to be able to foster and give up those little babies. Um, I've not been able to do that so far. Uh, they stay with me once I cross the threshold. But now that I'm getting older, I think I could probably do it with kittens. You know, because yeah, well, they don't um, they don't know a, what a home is yet, right? Well, as you mentioned, um, I Royal Canaan does have some really great resources about fostering. Um, we've been partnering together for a while now on providing like inspiration and education for great. people who are maybe new to fostering. Uh, the most recent thing that we put out together is part of their uh, ongoing catalogy series and it's a video that's about 30 minutes long kind of showing people that fostering is something that's possible to do in a pandemic world and in a post-pandemic world and shows you like how to set up how to set up your life in a way that you can do that um, so if you want to watch that um, I was gonna say where can watch, we find that yeah it's at royalcanon.com slash foster okay, okay. Uh, but to your point, um, in terms of, you know, being willing to part with them, I think that, like, really, it's just, it's a matter of, you know, knowing what your goal is the whole time. When I get a kitten in, I'm not looking at them as like, oh, this is like my new best friend who I need to bond with in a permanent way and like make these lifelong memories with. It's more like, I get in a little hot mess kitten and my goal is to make them sturdy enough to not need me. And sure. so every single thing I'm doing with that kitten is in service of like getting them to a place where they're independent. Oh, and then sure. yeah. with that attitude, I, what happens is once they're independent, I'm kind of looking at them like, you don't need me anymore. Why are you still <laughs> yeah. here? Like, yes. uh, and it, it gets <laughs> to a point where like, I have like an eight week old healthy kitten running around and I'm almost like, what, what are you doing here? Like, <laughs> why are you here? You don't need me. Plus you're like taking up space that I could be using I to know. help a kitten who's True. at the shelter right now today True. who needs me. So it, it really truly gets to a point where you sort of fall in love with the cycle of it. And you can appreciate the moments that you shared that got them to where they are. But I am happy when my kitten, honestly, I'm like, let someone else deal with them. Once right. they're healthy and like running around being crazy, I'm like, someone else can do this. Yeah. I don't need to do this. Kittens can be yes. crazy, but at least, you know, you're also giving them that socialization. So when somebody does adopt those, you, they're not getting a, usually I'm, I'm assuming they're not getting a scaredy cat or a cat that's no, going to be no. hiding All away. All of my kittens are like, everybody's like, oh my gosh, they're so loving. They just trust everyone. They like purr when you look at them. I'm like, yeah, because they were raised by people, you right. know? Right. And it's important to me, you know, there's this sort of myth that I think is so not true, uh, that uh, hand raised kittens are like worse behaved, which is completely not no, true. I, agree. I think it is true um, for a kitten who's, for a single kitten who's hand raised and then never introduced to another cat. Right, yes. Uh, I, I feel really passionately that cats belong with other cats, um, yes. especially if they're kittens. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing for me that, you know, every single kitten I raise, if they don't come here with other kittens, we make sure we immediately get other kittens and we start them on quarantine sure. so that two, three weeks from then we can introduce them so that they're socialized, not just with people, but with other cats. Each other. That, that's yes. so that important. serves them. Yeah. Yes. I, I adopted a cat from a relative that um, married a man that his son was deathly allergic to cats. I mean, like peanut allergy. I'd never heard of such a thing. So she like really needed to rehome this cat and the cat had been raised with a dog, no cats. And the cat freaked out seeing all my cats and was acting like, I don't know what this creature is, but could you get it away from me, please? She would yell like she was being abused and you'd run mm -hmm. in and it's like, no one's touching you. 
What is your problem? Yeah. So when my daughter left college and got into housing where she could have a cat, I said, you're taking Marley because Marley needs to get out of the house with a million cats. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. I mean, and cats have this reputation for being these like independent creatures right. and, and that, not. that might be true for like, they like to lay in the window by themselves sometimes, but cats are meant to be with other cats. You Agreed. know, when you think of um, community cats, like it's community cat colonies, it's family groups, like they're very yes. interdependent and for kittens, they learn a lot from one another and they benefit so much from one another. By the way, humans benefit from adopting kittens as pairs. I, so I would oh, never God. want to adopt a solo kitten. Oh my gosh. That is just because you'll get a kitten who is going to treat you like you're a cat, which means bunny kicking your feet and right? climbing up your back and all this stuff that is not really like the type of behavior that you want. When you have a kitten who has a friend, they really like take their energy out together and you can sort of watch and enjoy and they they are much better much better companions i think as oh, as yeah. pair. or at we, least if you have a cat already then you know yes then you but can adopt. that kitten energy i know they when rita kitten. got simba then this yeah. kitten and she was like i'm not taking kittens but simba kind of fell into her lap and then a sweetie pie kind of came up and she was like this kitten needs a kitten I'm getting sweetie pie. These will be the last That's kids, but my advice. <laughs> was the only one like... I went out and looked for purposely because he yes. needed a kitten buddy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Whenever somebody tells me I have one kitten and no other cats and my kitten is really badly behaved, what do I do? I say, get yeah, another kitten. kitten. Exactly. Another thing. We it's did a behavior true. session. It's, yeah, we did a behavior session for a lady community. that had taken a, a, a neonate and had bottle fed it and everything. And she had an older cat and this cat kept going after the older cat. He didn't understand hissing, growling, what that, he didn't know that that meant back off. It was just a noise and he just kept going after this cat. Okay, like, I want to play. No one ever taught this cat how to be a cat. This is the problem here. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have to take a quick break, okay. but we'll be back in just a few seconds to talk more with Hannah. We'll be right back. And welcome back to 19 Counts and Counting with my co-host Linda Hall and our extra special guest, kitten lady herself, Hannah Shaw. We are talking about fostering and how there is such a need out there for people to foster. I'll tell you one of the biggest things that I thought, you know, when you go into a shelter, the cats that I've gotten out of a shelter, most of them, the behavior I saw at the shelter was completely different to what I saw when I got home. And, you know, we adopted my, my Katie dog, Rita knows it's, that's the dog. I'm a cat person, but that is the one dog that was the dog. And uh, she was really like jumpy and hyper. And that is not at all who she was when I got her home. She's the best dog ever. So fostering the cats and getting them socialized and then giving people a chance to meet these cats in a more natural home environment. I think, do you agree? That really helps? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why, you know, the video I was just mentioning that I just put out, um, one of the things that I discuss in it is really how fostering is the future of animal welfare. Uh, you know, we have got to move past this kind of idea that animals belong in cages at a shelter, yeah. you know, being kind of institutionalized in that way. Um, when we are able to get more members of the community to see that fostering really can work for them, uh, that that enables animals to have a home-like setting to, you know, recover from illness in, to grow up in, to just, you know, take a breather. If they've, you know, a lot of these cats that are entering shelters, they just need like a little bit of time to right. just become ready to be adopted. Uh, and you're so right that, you know, adopting straight from a foster home will give you more of an idea of who this cat really is. You know, there's a lot, there's a big push now to do these sort of uh, home to home adoptions rather than having animals have to come be in a shelter setting. You know, if they can go straight to a foster home and then be adopted from the foster home, that gives the foster parent the ability to share what this cat's behavior really is like, you know, what their preferences are, what they, you know, enjoy yes. doing and what treats they love. And, and like, that's so much better than the guessing game of getting a cat who's been in a cage, who's, 
you know, frankly traumatized. Like that's oh, a I know. to be in a cage around a bunch of barking dogs, like different people coming and going. That's that's not a good way to assess. No. Yes. Not at yes. all. Not and at all. And it's not my, just the kittens, but um, older cats too that end up in the shelters. They they need right. fostering as well. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different populations to foster. And that's something that I think is really important to say, you know, when people see me with tiny babies and they say, well, I couldn't do that. That's fine. You don't have to do exactly what I do. You can foster adult cats. You could do moms and babies. That's a huge one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, my mother-in-law awesome. right now is fostering her first uh, mom and babies. Really? And it's so cute because she texts us pictures every day of their weight chart and she's like really Aww. so excited about it. And we're, we are just enjoying um, watching her do that journey, but she's not somebody she who thought she could foster, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it was only through knowing us and going, okay, well maybe I'll give it a shot. And it has been so fun for her. I Love mean- that. Doing a mom and babies is a really cool place to start because uh, it's sort of like the mom is doing most of the work and you just are supervising. Uh, you can learn a lot from watching a mom too. Sure. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, sure. a really fun to do. You can foster weaned kittens. You can foster spicy feral babies. There's like so many different populations yes. that need you. Even senior cats need foster homes. I know they do. Um, and medical cases. So really like yeah. the great thing about cat welfare is there's sort of like all these different lanes you can choose. And once you're on it, there's going to be something for you to do all the time. Yeah. I yeah. recently adopted two seniors that were living in a cage at the shelter. Their owner had died. Mm. Um, I had at that time, I was down to 18 cats. So one of my friends in rescue said, I know you have two openings. Mm -hmm. So of course they're here now. And, you know, they were, they were just wasting away mm -hmm. at the shelter. They, they weren't, they weren't in danger of being euthanized, but they were just in danger of dying from their grief. Yes. grief. But they're yeah. doing great now. So, um, that would be a wonderful thing if somebody would foster more seniors and sure. get them out of those cages and yeah. out of danger of dying of heartbreak or being euthanized. And all of it adds up, you know, I mean, right. you and I are doing very different things, but it all adds up. I'm so grateful when people work with populations that I don't, because it means I don't have to worry about it. Someone That's else right. That. Right. Um, so it, it all helps. Every single piece of it helps. And I, I know um, I, I have a rescue, Friends of Eline Rescue Center here that I'm, you know, in love with this woman is just, she's amazing. And, you know, the cats aren't in cages and they're not in danger of being euthanized, but they're not living in a home. And I said to her, I almost feel guilty not going to a shelter that isn't no kill and saving a life. And she said, every day I have to turn away cats from my shelter because I don't have room. Mm -hmm. And cats need a home. This is Thank great. You. They spoil them rotten. They're, I mean, if a cat has to go somewhere, that's the place, but it's still not a home. And for all the volunteers, they can't give enough attention to everybody. So, you know, fostering, you foster a cat, that's one more she can take in. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, that's a good point. And people sometimes ask, you know, where's the most impactful place to adopt from? And the truth is, no matter where you adopt from, you're you're opening up a space for another cat. Mm -hmm. um, so even if you if you are like, I don't want to go to my local shelter, or I want to go to a cat cafe. Well, guess where the cats from the cat cafe come from? Exactly. Like, from exactly. The shelter. So yes. you go adopt from the cat cafe, they go get another cat from the shelter and bring them in. So yes. um, really, no matter who you're adopting, no matter who you're fostering for, all of it makes a difference. And um, there's a lot of information you can find if you're interested in kittens specifically. Um, I have just so many resources. Kittenlady.org is my website. I've got free webinars. I've got books. Awesome. I've got videos. I've got articles. I've got what, however you learn. Yes. I've got, I've got an yes. audio book. That's awesome. I love that. I knew about your, your videos. I didn't know you had an audio book. That's great. Yeah. yeah. My book, Tiny But Mighty is available in an audio book. So something you can listen to in the car. It's narrated by me. Some of my foster kittens actually uh, were in the studio when we recorded it. So I have purring on. Oh, I love that. Oh, That would have been great. I just drove, what was it? 10 hours to South Carolina to work with and Rita back. for a week and back because I'm still a little leery about getting on airplanes. And that would, I 
said, an audio book would have really been helpful right now. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll next, get it for next trip. Yes, next trip. Uh, and, you know, I was thinking, like my husband, when we oh, reached the subject of cats, I hate cats. I don't like cats. Mm -hmm. So he was raised on a farm and he only knew barn cats and he really didn't know the joy. And he only gave him, let us adopt a cat because we nagged him a lot. And um, his daughter, Cassie and I were volunteering at the rescue center and so we kept coming home and talking about Subra. And so one day he just said, you can get Subra, but one, just one cat. And here we are with 11. So I'm thinking, <laughs> If you had a situation like that and you fostered a cat, hey, honey, this is just temporary. I'm only taking this cat for one month, two months. They might find out like my husband who always has a cat on his lap when he's sitting down now and found out he does not hate cats. That might be a really good learning experience well, and yeah, a way I, I to meet. There is such a thing. There's something called foster to adopt, which is a way that people who are maybe considering adopting, but they're not really sure, you can foster to adopt. Um, so you take the, the animal into your home and you know, you're know you still set up as a foster parent. So if it doesn't work out, it's fine. You adopt them out. And if it does work out, then you become the adopter. I um, love that. So I think yeah. that's a great option for people who, um, you know, we've done that with dogs where I've been like, am I a dog person? I don't know. Maybe we'll foster one and see what it's like. And then I find out I'm not a dog person. Um, I I really love dogs. We foster a dog twice, two to three times a year. We'll foster a dog. Yeah, that's great. That yes. fun. I saw those puppies you were. Yeah, we recently. They're, they're so cute. Bunch of neonatal puppies. So, um, you know, it's something that for me, I've found is like great as a foster temporary thing, but it's sort of like I'm happy when they get home. Right? Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> yes, yes. And a friend that would she, handful. <laughs> yeah. And a friend that but would she visit with her dog. I'd love walking the dog. and But yeah, I didn't want that all the time. So you that might be a good answer. Fostering is a great option. Also, like if you're like, oh, I wish I could have a cat, but I'm not in a right place in my life to have one, just foster, you know, foster sure. for a month and then. That's great you know, adopt the cat out and then don't have a cat for nine months and then uh, foster another one, you know? Yes. It's, it's, I it's love a, the idea of moms and kittens. That really appeals to me. I have that whole back room upstairs, Linda, that's not being- The eaten. kitten room, yeah, yeah. I could make yeah. that a kitten room. And with yeah. the mom there, that's a good way, like you said, of getting introduced to fostering. She's there to feed the cats. You don't have, you don't to, have get to get up every couple of hours. Yeah. Morning. Now yeah. you're singing my song. Yeah. I've always said, if, you know, babies could stay infants and cute and lovable, but not keep you up all night. So that might be the, yeah, that might be the way to go. Just keep fostering kittens. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> I mean, when, whenever someone says like, I wish cats stayed small. It's a little hard for me to hear because like my entire goal is to make them <laughs> big. Um, and I have, you know, I have a lot of kittens who struggle to put on weight. And so I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, right. The whole it's point not... is to make them grow and become like robust. But, yes. but when people are like, oh, I wish they stayed small. I'm like, just get more of them. Like when you foster, yes. you like, they are like tiny and then they grow, 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 grow. And then they go away and then you get a new one and there's yeah. a new one. Yeah. yeah. I see an infant out and I'm like, oh, but no, I don't want one. But if I could foster infants, that would be great. <laughs> You actually could be a foster parent. You watch out what you say. Right? No, no, no. I got it up. I got it up. I, well, focus like, cats. I think sometimes people, people get a little too like commitment phobic with it, but you can foster once a year. Like you can just be like, right. this could be a thing where you say, okay, every summer for one month, I foster mom and babies. And like, that's what I do every summer. And it's a empowering thing for me and my family. And we do it every July to make a difference. But then after that, we're not big foster people. You know, we take the rest of the year off, but like even doing it once a year makes sure. a big difference. So yes. I, I just think it's important for people to realize there's like way more flexibility than you think. And sometimes when people follow me, I think, I hope that no one thinks they have to like, look, their life doesn't have to be like my, my life is literally just Kittens, 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 kittens. Right. Yeah. Well, it's like what I, lady, but like, like you don't have to I be. tell people yeah. you don't have to have 19 cats. You don't have to have 11 cats. You could have yeah. two. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We don't, you know, recommend I don't that say to one. I don't say one, but no. two. No, I mean, you got to have two. Yes. That's how we got number two because the lady at the shelter said, you need another one for the so Then we had to get a cat for the cat. And that was a perfect example. Baca was running from tree to tree, climbing on my shoulders. I couldn't look at another cat. Baca was totally all over me. And, and I love a lovey lap cat. This is like, 
this is what I want. So I brought Baca home and she entered the door and said, see you later, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Not a laptop. Not, yeah, uh -huh. she, she will lay on Brian's lap. She's a one person cat and I'm not it. And I was like, you totally had me fooled. But she made a really good friend for Supra. So it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they will fool you. So yeah, having them in a home and knowing their personality. And we always said to Jackie, you know, we want a cat. And she always had this on the scale of, of lump cat to ornery cat. And it's like, where do you want this to fall? You know, do you want someone to play with you? Do you want... So this would give such a better idea of where that cat falls in the spectrum. Sure. And yeah, because it's been in a home and you're seeing the true personality. Well, I know we're, we're running out of time and I know we have okay. another commitment, Hannah. Um, so the takeaway is if fostering is so necessary out there because people don't spay and neuter and you can do as much or as little as you want, work with little babies, work with seniors or anywhere in between, but don't be afraid of it. Yes. And shout out to Royal Canaan because we love Absolutely. a business that will take on and, and shoot out to help people and actually help the, the babies they're shooting to feed. So I yeah. so appreciate that about them too. I love working with them and I love that they emphasize the importance of fostering. So yes, um, you can watch that new video that I just put out at royalcanaan.com slash foster. You can also watch um, the webinar series that we did together like eight hours of kitten care content. Um, so all about how to take care of kittens. That's at kittenlady.org slash webinar. Um, and then of course my book is Tiny But Mighty. So if people are really interested in learning how to care for kittens, you can get Tiny But Mighty as a hardcover or as an audio book for your next yes. your next, That's a great book. next drive to South it. Carolina. Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. I will get that for you as a, as a Thank gift. Thank you. Next time we yes. Drive down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Hannah. So don't forget it. Kittenlady.org, Royal Canaan slash foster. And go out there and investigate fostering and see how you can help cats and kittens in need. Yes. Linda thank Hall, you. as always, thank you for being my co-host. Hannah, I loved having you back on the show anytime. Just let us know. We're happy to have you. And of course, our awesome Mark Winter who gave us the spot on Pet Life Radio and took a chance on us. I'm forever grateful. Yes. Now you know what we say, right, Linda? Every day Every is day Saturday. Until next <laughs> time, you. thank you. Thank you. This was awesome.